Hey, what's up? Tommy Tourette's here with another one take wonder for you. Bitcoin finally shoved the big green dildo up the bear's asses. The only thing that won't be part of this uh, one take wonder is a little piece I'll be interjecting from a video I made the other day, or I was trying to make the other day. Um, basically, all day I, I did five takes. And I remember during my last one, it was during this candlestick as it was hitting the 61.8 retracement here. Uh, but since then, I've just been watching it react to the two-hour cloud because I've been stressing the importance of that for a long time. And so after seeing how it's been reacting and observing everything else in the meantime, you know, I've made a decision whether I want my this video to be you know, more bullish or more bearish. And guess what? It's bullish. Again, what do you know, huh? Uh, but, you know, of course, I'll leave room for me being wrong again. There's still the chance it does come down and retest this 34, 30 level. If this two-hour cloud doesn't hold again, because uh, it's, it's fought with it so many times in recent months that yeah it really needs to hold this time i think otherwise you know the bears might be right about their longer term predictions you know i'd really start to doubt myself if it doesn't finally fucking hold this time but so yeah many times with this two hour cloud or any uh, ichimoku cloud in general uh, uh, you'll notice the price will break out almost exactly where it flips from either red to green or right before it flips from green to red. And like I pointed out in my last video, the last time that happened, it did not, uh, like the last time it flipped from, green to red. Well, I guess it was down here at the bottom. I could have sworn it looked different in my, oh, right here, that's it. <laughs> so when it flipped from green to red right here, uh, and it failed to break out, like I said, I was discouraged, and I, like I would be now if it doesn't hold. And you saw what happened afterwards. So I would expect a similar move to this if the two hour cloud doesn't hold again, and it would probably, you know, painstakingly form a longer term bottom on the 34, 30 zone. Uh, you may have noticed these uh, Fibonacci lines are slightly different than my previous video, if you watched my previous video, because, long story, sort of, uh, Crypto Watch, there was a little glitch, it brought back my old TA from, you know, about a month ago, that randomly was deleted one day, after deleting my new TA the other day. So, I was fine with that for now, I'll just, because I consider both of them pretty much equally important. These ones aren't much different. Anyway, if you look close enough, you'll spot very slight differences between what you're seeing now on the screen and what's about to pop up on my video from the other day. Here is uh, what Bitcoin was doing in the half hour leading up to Twitter's tweet. They tweeted, and we're back. Believe that was Jack was I believe that was Jack Dorsey uh, for obvious reasons, and you can see in the half hour leading up, it had just broken out of this two hour cloud I'm talking about. Actually, you can't see necessarily. This is the two hour chart, but I do indicate it right there. Um. So this is almost precisely when they tweeted and it had broken out above my uh, 0.236 retracement of approximately 44 down to the bottom. Less than a half hour after their tweet, let's say about 20 minutes after their tweet, it had officially established that 236 as support in the short term and 
not very long after that, blast off straight through the short term 236, straight through the long term 382, and up to the short term 382 that I've been watching. Tactical analysis is not bullshit. I will have a series of that. It will be stuff like this where I, you can see it live. <laughs> Boom. To the line. And done. And here's just another example. Like this happened live while I was recording my last video uh, on my other screen. You know, this, this perfect touch of, of this fib. Like all day long my live stream is proving that TA is not bullshit. But my goal is to eventually take the time to collect a lot of the best proof, make it into a long-running series. As long as I live, I'll... TA's not bullshit episode 1000. <laughs> blah, 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 there's this, 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 and this happened. All right, now let's take a look real quick before I switch over to my other monitor at the shorter-term charts. See the one-hour cloud is starting to apply pressure. Downward. The 30 minute cloud, though, it's uh, been eating at now for a little while. A few hours, well, actually, more like most of the day, ever since about noon my time, Eastern time. And it's just turning green again right here at uh, conf at a uh, at a bunch of the EMAs. My my personalized EMA ribbon there. Uh, the uh, the numbers on the EMAs: ten, twenty-one, one hundred, one twenty-eight, and two hundred. Fifteen minutes. That looks nice. So, you know, in the meantime, you can kind of see the uh, real time uh, inverse correlation with the US dollar and the stock market over here. So, you see, the dollar's been going down since, well, basically since this morning uh, when the stock market, right before the stock market opened. So, when was that? That was, uh, well, right here, this was an hour before the stock market opened. And it's been on an uptrend ever since. Downtrend. Uptrend. I noticed this all the time. If you look, you will notice it too. And, you know, there won't be so many people uh, denying my theories uh, if they were to actually look, basically. Three minute cloud. <laughs> hey, it looks good. It might meander down here till about 6 p.m. Break out right about, yeah, that would make sense. Like, uh, for another example of the inverse correlation, I've noticed, uh, unfortunately, I don't have my tweets ready to, to pull up, but I had an old tweet like a month or two ago when the, the futures of the American indices opened a, a, around or reopened somewhere around 6 or 7 p.m. and plummeted a percent or two uh, real quick and in the meantime bitcoin pumped so that could happen today what i'm saying it wouldn't surprise me at all because you know we can definitely see uh that the day started real bad for the stock market uh and then it kind of went sideways and then ended more bad than good the s p for example closed lower than it opened I'm not sure about the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones. I might get into that real quick if I decide to look at them individually. Um, 
I might take a little bit of a closer look at Bitcoin longs and shorts than I have been lately, just because it's a little more interesting than it has been lately. Bitcoin longs clearly on a nice uptrend here. So anyway, let's get over to the full screen. Here's the sum of the American indices. Whoops. Unfortunately, this candlestick did not close red as I was hoping, but that doesn't really make it any less bearish in my opinion. It makes it the tiniest bit less bearish, maybe. The tiniest bit. Because, you know, it would be ideal to see it red, but if you look at everything else, it doesn't really change anything. It's still a doji. And if it had, if Bitcoin, oh, sorry, this, isn't, this one doesn't involve Bitcoin. If the stock market had gone a tiny bit lower, you know, if one of the indices was a tiny bit lower, basically this would have been red. Uh, not too much more to say other than it still hasn't broken above this point where I identified bearish divergence. The MACD is not crossed yet. Where I was pointing out it was starting to look like it was cross crossing right here, I think. Well, that, that was my previous uh, video from a few days ago, so I guess you might not see that. Anyway, it still looks like it's going to cross. A little less obvious at this point after it didn't go down over the last few days but the rsi didn't go up either so keep that in mind all right the sum of the indices divided by the price of gold is reacting to this trend line as i expected today you know at the beginning of the day it kind of looked almost like it was broken out of it but now it's clearly found resistance at it and yeah that's why because it was a logarithmic chart so it did like right there it looked like it had broken out but still even on logarithmic chart yeah bearish divergence brings it 10% down, hopefully, in the near term, or relatively near term. You look at gold itself, I haven't looked in a few days, but it's basically gone sideways as far as I can tell. It's the same exact price as the last time I looked. And uh, that's perfect. That's basically what I've been expecting. Like my last video, I said I'm basically more neutral on gold right now than anything. I want to see how it reacts, you know, if, if the 1300 holds the support. And it tested this line perfectly after a triple bottom, uh, sorry, after a double bottom. And now it's created a triple bottom over, you know, the last week or so. So I'm definitely leaning more bullish, definitely leaning more bullish now in gold. And like I just showed my, uh, oh yeah, so Bitcoin versus gold. I thought I was looking at that for a second previously, but I wasn't. So I'm bullish on gold, and then from there, look at Bitcoin versus gold. And over the medium term, short to medium term, pretty bullish on this too. Uh, this is a long-term logarithmic trend line, 0.886 retracement from the previous really uh, significant peak up to the most recent really significant peak. So, uh, good reason why I'm expecting support here, and I, it already happened since I expected it. It just hasn't really been anything all that significant yet. I want to see it, you know surpass this high before I'm happy or remotely excited really I'm only somewhat excited now but what I'm almost positive is coming soon 
All right, then there's this chart here that I've been watching since the end of November last year. Looking pretty good. Got about 2.2% to go before it meets significant resistance, according to what I've been watching. Um, you know, beyond that, on the weekly time frame, it's got a hell of a long way to go till it meets, you know, serious long-term resistance. Of course, you can't really do much other than just watch this play out. Obviously, you can't, you know, take a long on it. And you can't necessarily make any prediction on any certain asset solely based on this because they're all going to do whatever and affect it however it affects it. But, uh, say, for example, how I use a chart like this is in conjunction with individual analysis on, you know, the components of the chart, as well as, you know, my analysis on other combinations involving components that might be in this chart. So just for example, the last one I showed, Bitcoin versus gold, bullish on Bitcoin versus gold in the long term. and here. We have Bitcoin and gold as an entity together, basically working up against DXY as far as because this is a spread between the sum of 30 times the price of gold in Bitcoin and the negative value of DXY times 20. So as DXY goes down, it subtracts less, this goes up. So basically, anything that happens that's good as far as I'm concerned for the crypto market causes this chart to go up. Anything that happens that's bad for the crypto market causes this chart to go down. So for a long time now, it's been mostly sideways the whole year. But overall, Bitcoin and gold are tightening their spread. All right, all right, they're, they're tightening the spread between, you know, themselves and DXY. And uh, I wanted to go a little more into Bitcoin longs and shorts because Bitcoin long is getting close to a significant breakout, it looks like to me. Here's the bullish Gartley pattern I've been watching for a long time. Obviously, yeah, you know, it's from early 2018 that it started. Anyway, since then, I, it seemed like it was going to bottom, maybe, like double bottom at the PRZ, price reversal zone, but it didn't quite happen. It made another low, basically double bottoming with point X. And nice uptrend since then, as I've been expecting. And I remember back, you know, late last year, pointing this out. This, for example. And it's, since then, it's basically been up. Uh, this here, I'm moving around. That's from a move, uh, I think I move it right here. Yeah, so you see, like, basically all the way up the Gartley pattern. I just copied that to where I suspected the bottom was going to be. And it's been following it pretty well. Similarly, we got Bitcoin shorts following it. Well, sort of started following a path that I uh, laid out for it the early November. It was up here when I did the same thing with this. I don't remember exactly where. I guess it comes from right here. Yeah. So I copied the candlestick pattern from point D of this bearish butterfly down to here. So that's uh, about one month worth of action, a little more than a month. And of course, it fell right down fast. And that was exciting, but... Not necessarily because Bitcoin wasn't doing what I hoped it would do in the meantime. And then it bounced right back up and didn't continue down here. Look, I was hoping. But anyway, I believe it's on its way there now. 
uh, for some reason, the sine wave that I've been watching for a long time is no longer here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so this uh, sine wave, it basically dipped below it real quick. I've literally been watching this sine wave for ever since the Gartley pattern, pretty much. Or the, in this case, the bearish butterfly. Bounced off of it right here. Up to this resistance. And as of uh, February 9th, we're back below it. And it's showing significant weakness, kind of uh, in no man's land at the moment. Not no man's land, but like in the middle of nowhere. I don't, I don't see much support other than right here, this low. So hopefully this low will break soon. At which point... The short squeeze that I've been waiting for for literally uh, almost a year. Uh, shortly after last year's April short squeeze, I guess. Or was that 2017? I don't even remember. No, it had to be April uh, 2018. Uh, but yeah, so since about a month or two after that April one, I was uh, anticipating another one on the horizon. And it's just been really frustrating since then, waiting for the stock market to finally taper off and fuel this bull run. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but, uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously I, I expect it to come down to about 10K shorts. At some point, we got the downward resistance or the downward support line now. Uh, Intersecting with this target too in March. So yeah, I can see it taking a, you know another couple of weeks to a month to meander down there. But I can also see it just dipping really quick down to there, and then bouncing up here, and then starting to range for a while. Again, this is just a little extra, like bonus sort of, but because it's it's I've definitely learned even though this is helpful to know what's going on in Bitcoin longs and shorts and to know what to expect or what is more likely. Bitcoin longs going up doesn't mean Bitcoin's gonna pump. Bitcoin shorts going down doesn't mean Bitcoin's gonna pump. I definitely you know have seen that firsthand. But in the longer term, if you know the general trend is, you know, Bitcoin longs is due for a huge substantial moon and Bitcoin shorts has had obvious bearish pressure for a long time. Meanwhile, there's a good possibility based on a lot of other technical analysis on the uh, my charts, especially, but the big. All right, then there's this chart that I showed last time for the first time. And I published it today after somebody asked me to, you know, make it public on TradingView. So there's a little extra analysis on it. Uh, the MACD still looks like shit. It's holding support at this trend line, this downtrend line on the RSI for now. But I don't expect that to last long. In the shorter term came up to, uh, to resistance that I identified, you know, a while ago based on this low and this candlestick right here and this high. So it's, it's at this very important resistance zone right here. Not very important necessarily, but this is the very important one. In the short and the medium term, this is key. And it just happens to be the round number 10 course just makes sense. And not too much to say about it other than I'm still very bearish on it. My Twitter account's picking up some steam lately, which I consider a pretty good sign, the crypto market. Going from most recent down, uh, we got Crypto Snorlax with 160,000 followers let me know he watched my video and he appreciated it. 
We got Crypto Watch, which is the, uh, the the website that I watch in the bottom of my twenty four seven live stream. They tweeted that, uh, well, thanking me for using their site basically and wondering where they can see my live stream. Mentioning they love the theme of, I guess, probably this whole thread, the two hour cloud being important, the short squeeze that hasn't happened yet. And then we got a retweet from Brock Pierce right there. EOS, Steam it, BitShares, and now <laughs> uh, Gox rising in the future. Mount Gox coming back, fully reimbursing everyone for their losses, and maybe also giving them extra stake in the exchange. That's bullish as fuck. Anyway, here's the article about Bitcoin, uh... Anyway, here's the article. Bitcoin has been characterized as the digital gold that according to some Bitcoin proponents is better at being gold than gold itself. Bitcoin is also predicted to surpass the $8 trillion market cap of gold and emerge as the store of value. The current value of Dutch central bank gold is about $25 billion, so in order to buy 69,000 Bitcoin, the mined Bitcoin equivalent of the Dutch gold reserve, it would only need to sell 1% of its gold, or 492 gold bars. The Mt. Gox trustee currently controls X amount of Bitcoin, which is bigger in terms of market share than the gold reserves of the Swiss central bank. And the fact that those coins are locked up in legal proceedings and whatnot, they're at least found as of last year at that exchange that I had a little bit of money at. BTCE, now WEX, which is not really around anymore, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, so the coins being found, that's very bullish for Bitcoin, but you know, it's, it's a fundamentally bullish thing. And now, the fact that Brock is going to leave uh, Mark with nothing and doesn't care about the money, he just wants to ha have a happy ending. If he's to be trusted, and this, this is awesome news. And I, I trust him for the most part. Yeah, the, you know, he's got a history of not great things, but he was young, at least, as well, <laughs> without going any more into it. Everybody makes mistakes, and I don't know the details as well, so you know, I haven't really delved into the whole thing. Just what I've seen of the guy and what I've seen of his work, I'm impressed. All right, before I go, a quick little preview of my next video, uh, sort of, or what it's about. So you have money that starts as other people's donations where you think they're giving to charity, where they think they're giving to charity. It appears it ends up as revenue at a Donald Trump club. More in common with a drug cartel laundering money than it does with charity practices. Uh, so I'll play that clip real quick. Just a minute or two of it. So you have money that starts as other people's donations where they think that they're giving to charity and it appears to end up as revenue. Ah, uh, fuck. So you have money that starts as other people's donations where they think that they're giving to charity and it appears to end up as revenue at a Trump club. You, okay, the, and you, these are your words. You say this has more in common with a drug cartel laundering money than it does with charity practices. Explain That's right. That. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you talk to charity people about this and they're just floored. You know, they say, how could you arrange something like that? And when you look at it, you're taking money 
It starts as one intent, starts as charity money given to an organization, and on the other end it becomes revenue for a company. I understand that you asked Eric Trump for an itemized list of expenses. What was his response? There, there was no response to that. Uh, th once we started asking the tougher questions, that's when uh, they, they shut down. Okay. All right. And so now I'll just uh, add a little clip from my video a few days ago that I'm going to trash. But there's a couple of minutes where I show my Twitch video. Here it is. All right, as usual, good luck and be careful. Bullish until proven bearish. Take it easy.